We are back with another series. Let's revise PYQs. This will benefit you in your upcoming exam. Let's look at the first question from this video. Question 1. In which of the following nerve injuries is the instrument shown below used? Your options are. And the correct answer is radial nerve. Here's the explanation. These two things, cock up splint. This is a A dynamic or static cock up splint. This is a dynamic cock up splint. Dynamic cock up splint. See, static, both these splints were the only indication wrist to drop. Wrist to drop. Okay, radial nerve palsy, wrist to drop. If it's a neuropraxia, definitely we know that this will recover in 6 to 8 weeks. I have to do like this and put a static splint. It is in this position. It won't act. It will be like this permanently. Okay, at least in 24 hours, they should wear the book says you should wear for 20 hours. So then it will be effective. So this is called a cock up splint, a static or a dynamic cock up splint. Look at here, a spring is there. You able to see two springs are there. Okay. Right, what happens in wrist drop, patient can't extend, but they can flex. So what happens when the patient forcefully flex, no, extension is done by the spring. So this is called a dynamic cock up splint. This is superior to a static cock up splint. So both are the indications they are used in wrist drop. Okay. So that completes the cock up splint. Question 2. A woman during her routine examination presents with the following x-ray finding. What is her most likely diagnosis? Your options are. And the correct answer is multiple enchondromas. Here's the explanation. Enchondroma. This chondroma is otherwise called enchondroma. Enchondroma. Okay. This is a benign tumor which arises from the hyaline cartilage. This arises from the hyaline cartilage. Okay. This arises from the hyaline cartilage. It causes destruction of the cancellous bone. That's why the name N. N means inside. Exo means outside. Exostosis or osteochondroma which arises from the cartical bone outside it's it's shown outside the bone but this here you see the destruction is happening inside the bone that is in the cancellous bone that's why since inside it's called enchondroma this is called enchondroma and it arises from the hyaline cartilage the peak age of incidence don't take down this 50 no this is the peak age of incidence 10 to 30 years 10 to 30 years okay it can happen anywhere in the body since it's a hyaline cartilage tumor most commonly this is seen in phalanges of the hand phalanges phalanx of the hand especially little finger especially little finger thousand times repeated mcq please take down once in a depend b question i remember very strongly they had asked a question most common bone tumor of hand and foot this was the question Answer is enchondroma. So, this is the most common tumor that is seen in hand and foot. Okay. Enchondroma, that is called chondroma. Right. See, clinical presentation, 99 percentage, the, it is symptomless. No symptoms at all. Asymptomatic. Sometimes, this can present to you with pathological fracture. This can present to you with pathological fracture. Okay, so this is the clinical presentation. Very rarely it can, fracture means pain swelling. Okay, so it presents as pathological fracture. Diagnosis, and one more point I want to tell you, enchondroma, this what we are discussing is solitary enchondroma. Sometimes there is a condition called multiple enchondromatosis. Multiple enchondromatosis, multiple Enchondromatosis. Chondromatosis. Enchondromatosis. The answer is given in all orthopedic textbooks. Already we had studied in pathology Robbins also. This is called multiple enchondromatosis is called Volier's disease. Volier's disease. Okay. Volier's disease. Okay. Multiple enchondromatosis is called Volier's disease. Volier's disease is good or bad? Very bad. Why? 40 percentage of them will undergo malignancy by 40 years of age. That's what the book says. 
ओलियस डिज मल्टीपल एनकाट्रोमेटोसिस हई चांस आफ गोइंग फार मेलीग्नेंट चेंज कॉन्ट्रोसारकोम हई चांस आफ गोइंग फार मेलीग्नेंट चेंज सालिट्री एनकाट्रोमा इटल हेज वेरी पोटेंशियल टू अंड्रो गो मेलीग्नेंसी वेन इट इज मल्टीपल एनकाट्रोमेटोसिस अदर इज ओलियस डिज वेरी हई चांस आफ गोइंग फार मेलीग्नेंसी दट्स वाट बुक्स नो फार्टि पर्सेज अवट आफ हंड्रेड केस फार्टि केसस् विल गो फार मेलीग्नेंट चेंज सो दट इज ओलियस डिज If with multiple enchondromatosis, when the patients are associated with facial hemangioma, okay, enchondromatosis with hemangioma of the face, hemangiomas of the face, okay, it is called Mafusi syndrome, okay, Mafusi, Mafusi syndrome. okay very important so there are two variants of enchondroma simple enchondroma is one entity multiple enchondromatosis is called oliers disease enchondromatosis with facial hemangiomas they are called mafusi syndrome okay right then how to diagnose obviously our x ray when you take an x ray it will show you an expanded lytic lesion with wisp of calcification very pathognomonic you look at here an expanded lytic lesion we able to see expanded osteolytic lesion okay with wisp of calcification inside it see we are able to see small small this is calcifications okay calcification this very pathognomonic and one more thing i will erase and i will show you just to follow see it is expanded but nowhere you are seeing breaching of the cortex there is no breakage in the cortex see the cortex is completely intact cortex is completely intact there is no breakage of the cortex this again is very characteristic okay so it's very characteristic right so break there is no breakage of the cortex and this calcification some books uses a word this is stippled calcification stippled calcification okay some books uses a word popcorn calcification okay so the type of x ray changes you can see in enchondroma it can be an expanded lytic lesion with wisp of calcification presenting inside that can be called a stippled calcification or a popcorn calcification one more thing in one ortho book it is mentioned like this okay since it is like a ring no exactly it's like a ring this is called o ring sign o ring sign so these are the radiological features of enchondroma question 3 an rta patient presented to the emergency department with severe pain in the wrist an x ray was performed as given below what is the best next step of management your options are and the correct answer is neurovascular assessment and closed reduction and slab application here's the explanation see radial stellar fracture is otherwise you know distal radial fractures it can be a radial stellar distal radius means distal most portion of radius you can get a styloid radial styloid fracture you can get a colis fracture you can get a bartens fracture you can get a smith fracture okay four types are there now we are going to see the radial styloid fracture radial styloid fracture is otherwise called shaffer's fracture is otherwise called shaffer's fracture why this is called shaffer's fracture it's very interesting you know who is a shaffer okay shaffer is a polish or a high class whatever way whichever way you can take it's a shaffer is an high class driver okay it's a driver shaffer's fracture so it's called drivers certain times no the names will change just like that you can't in english is very peculiar language okay so in certain areas you have to use certain words for example somebody in a normal in an office setup somebody comes and cleans the area you will use a word sweeper same thing happens in flight also you can't use the word it's called cabin crew like that somebody who is just eh doing a simple cooking on road side you will call him as a cook the same guy when he does in a five star hotel is called a chef like that 
okay somebody driving an ordinary maruti car is called a driver somebody is driving a merk is called a chauffeur so the meaning is the same okay words are different so chauffeur means a driver so chauffeur's fracture why it's called a chauffeur's fracture why it's called a chauffeur's fracture very simple olden days i am telling before henry ford's era henry ford you would have heard of henry ford okay founder director of ford car company he was the man who invented the ignition self starter before him there was no self starter so how to start a car a chauffeur a driver has to go in front of the car in front of the bonnet outside the car through a hole no they will put a rod it's called handle you would have seen this in some vintage english movies like titanic so you have to put a handle you have to start a car like this like a generator once the engine got started it will give a backfire directly that will come and hit the radial styloid so before self starter era drivers very frequently daily they were developing this fracture so this was called a chauffeur's fracture it's very interesting first it was demonstrated by the great hutchinson so it's called hutchinson's fracture or it's called a backfire fracture so what are the other names of radial styloid it's called chauffeur's fracture it's called hutchinson's fracture it's called backfire fracture okay look at this very simple right see the styloid alone got fractured very simple treatment again it's very simple this fracture is best treated by close to reduction and below elbow pop cast suppose the chunk is very big and it's unstable better you just give a percutaneous k wire then you apply a be below elbow pop cast that's enough not not a great procedure is needed for this the best management is close to reduction below elbow pop casting if the fracture is unstable percutaneous percutaneous means through the skin you are doing you are not opening percutaneous k wire fixation with below elbow pop casting okay that completes radial styloid fracture question 4 which of the following is the most likely diagnosis for a 28 year old man who presented with complaints of backache morning stiffness and redness of the eyes as shown in the x ray image of the spine below your options are and the correct answer is ankylosing spondylitis here's the explanation the pathogenesis or inflammation in ankylosing spondylitis starts there and it undergoes stages of inflammation it can become bony erosion finally the hallmark is called syndesmophytes syndesmophytes like an osteophyte as per formation you look at this x ray this is the vertebral body this is the vertebral body here you are seeing a separate piece of bone here you are able to see a separate piece of bone these i will rub this now you see zoom and see they are called syndesmophytes this is the hallmark of ankylosing spondylitis dear friends okay now coming to clinical manifestations men are affected three times more common than women rheumatoid arthritis women are affected three times more common than men this men are affected more common than women typical age of onset is 20 to 30 years in one book i read that after 40 years ankylosing spondylitis will not happen just like that we can't type okay just like that we can't teach but that's a study they had let us know what is the most common age 20 to 30 you register this in your mind earliest presentation is pain and stiffness in the thoracolumbar region low back ache buttocks pain with pronounced morning stiffness when they get up from bed pain will be more in the sacroiliac joint and the vertebral body in thoraco thoracolumbar area as they start working pain decreases very classical history of ankylosing spondylitis very classical history of rheumatoid arthritis finger stiffness more during early morning hours where when we continue to work the finger stiffness comes down yes or no so exactly there are severe night pain which disturb the sleep night cries we had studied in two places dear friends skeletal tuberculosis osteo and osteoma third differential diagnosis for night cries or night pain is ankylosing spondylitis okay yes lumbar spine movement in all directions are restricted gradually there is loss of normal lumbar lordosis with the development of thoracic kyphosis and forward bending of the cervical spine okay yes you see patient may develop plantar fasciitis patient may develop endoculus tendinitis 
cost to control and cost to vertebral joints are involved at the end so what happens chest expansion is greatly reduced this is again a criteria clinically i had seen no always that you suspect ankylosing spondylitis we will measure the chest expansion chest expansion is very much decreased in about 25 to 30 percentage of patients hip joints are involved the hip joints are painful and movements are gradually reduced and the extra articular manifestations of ankylosing spondylitis are uveitis and cardiac abnormalities what cardiac abnormality we can expect we can expect a conduction defect we can expect an aortic incompetence aortic regurgitation trauma is a cause apart from rheumatic rheumatic fever is the most common cause trauma is the second common cause okay then syphilis in olden days is a very important cause for aortic regurgitation olden days syphilis because syphilis no it causes dissection of the root of the aorta so syphilis and ankylosing spondylitis from ortho side is an important cause for aortic regurgitation dear friends so rheumatic fever trauma syphilis aortic regurgitation ankylosing spondylitis yes and what other thing it can cause Con conduction defects it can cause SA node block, AV block, bundle of his, wherever it is, conduction block, heart blocks, ankylosing spondylitis. At the end, in fully developed ankylosing spondylitis, the patient develops a question mark body posture. You see, this was taken, this I, just an example thing, this was taken, the difference between these two, these two, no, 10 years. 10 years later, patient had gone for a posture like this, and this is called question mark body posture. When a question comes, question mark body posture is seen in definitely ankylosing spondylitis. Question 5. A 30-year-old male patient presented with complaints of a gradually progressive swelling around his wrist joint for 3 months. Given below is the image of the swelling on the x-ray film. What is the most likely diagnosis? Your options are. And the correct answer is osteoclastoma. Here's the explanation. Osteoclastoma. This is otherwise called giant cell tumor. This other is called giant cell tumor. Giant cell tumor. Osteoclastoma other is called giant cell tumor. The very peculiar thing is, the question is, is this malignant or benign? Because most of the time this is classified only under a benign tumor. Under a benign tumor. But why I had given this under malignant tumor? See, even though it is benign, 3% of the individual individuals, it can show pulmonary metastasis it can show you metastasis and it's behaving very aggressively behaving very aggressively so this ca you can't very clearly say this is purely benign this is purely malignant that is the very peculiarity of this osteoclastoma that is called giant cell tumor it classically arises from the epiphysis arises from the epiphysis osteochondroma metaphysis chondroblastoma epiphysis Chondromyxoid fibroma metaphysis, aneurysmal bones is metaphysis, unicameral bones is metaphysis, osteogenic sarcoma metaphysis, giant cell tumor epiphysis, giant cell tumor epiphysis and most common age is 15 to 35. The most common site is lower end of femur. Second site is upper end of tibia, upper end of tibia. So, it is again knee joint. This is a disorder of knee joint. And the very peculiar thing, first complaint is swelling. Pain comes much later. Only when pathological fracture happens in osteoclastoma, patient is complaining of pain. Okay. The presentation, they say, sir, increased swelling, sir. Slowly, it is progressively increasing. That's the complaint. Okay. So, swelling first, pain next, osteoclastoma. Giant cell tumor. Very peculiar thing again. What I read, no. The first time I am reading in malignant. More common in females. Slight female preponderance. Very peculiar. So far what we had seen. Eh? Osteo, uh, what is that? Exostosis male. Osteochondroma, that is exhausted male. Osteogenic sarcoma, male. Okay, this is one tumor, no. It is more common in slightly more female preponderance. That's what's given in the thing. So, this can be picked up as a peculiar to fool us, no? Because any bone tumor will say male, male, male. They may ask a question in NEAT exam. 
osteoclastoma is more common in male, female, equal sex ratio, none of the above. Okay, we should, okay, answer that as female, right. On palpation, this osteoclastoma gives what is called an eggshell crackling sensation. Eggshell crackling sensation. Osteoclastoma, it just gives an eggshell crackling sensation. Okay, good. And on aspiration, when you do a fine needle aspiration cytology, already I told you in bone cysts, this will show you only multinucleated giant cells. Lot of giant cells, no hemosiderin. When hemosiderin is there with giant cells mixed with the giant cell, you are mixed with hemosiderin, it is aneurysmal bone cyst. Only multinucleated giant cell, no hemosiderin seen, it should be osteoclastoma or giant cell tumor. Now, you see x-ray shows a very classical feature, x-ray shows a very classical thing. The cortex is expanded and thinned, no periosteal newborn formation. See, the cortex is expanded and the cortex, you see, it's very thin cortex. Here you see the cortex is thick. Normal area, the cortex is very thick. This much thickness is there. Here it's very thin, thinned out cortex. And you can see lot of lobulation here. Okay, lot of lobulations here. So, this gives a classical, I will erase this so that you can appreciate very well. This, this gives a very classical thing and this is called soap bubble appearance. This is called soap bubble appearance. 10 lakh time repeated MCQ. Okay, soap bubble appearance. Right. So, in case of osteogenic sarcoma, we had seen Codman's triangle sunburst appearance. Here it is soap bubble appearance. Very, very classical. Question 6. What is the likely diagnosis for a 55-year-old woman who presents with lower back pain? Please refer to the provided radiographic image of her lumbosacral spine. Your options are and the correct answer is osteoporosis. Here's the explanation. Shows marked osteoporosis and what happens? The disc bulges. In osteogenesis imperfect, what happens? The disc bulges. The vertebral body is weak because of osteoporosis. So the bulged disc from both above and below will compress the body of the vertebra. So this is a normal, see normal vertebra, it should be square or rectangle like this. This is normal. Here because of disc bulge, what happened? It has become like this, yes or no? So this is called biconcave vertebra, otherwise this is called codfish vertebra. This is a codfish, a sea fish, very rich in omega-3 fatty acid, no, codfish, fish liver oil, cod liver oil, how many times we had cod liver oil capsules, very rich in omega-3 fatty acid. We are consuming that regularly for general health, yes or no? So the codfish, when you take skeleton of the codfish, the vertebra of the codfish is biconcave normally. So this is our normal human vertebra, square rectangle. This is a real vertebra of a codfish. You're able to see it's biconcave, yes or no? You're able to see that? So this is a real picture of a vertebra of a codfish. So exactly these vertebras are becoming like a codfish vertebra. So this biconcave vertebra is otherwise called codfish vertebra. Okay. Question 7. A 40 year old patient presents to the emergency department following a road traffic accident. The radiograph of his pelvis is shown below. What is the most likely diagnosis? Your options are. And the correct answer is posterior dislocation of the hip. Here's the explanation. So this is your acetabulum. This is normal position of the head. Okay, what happens in a dislocation? You see, this when it gets dislocated, your head is here. So, this is a posterior dislocation hip. You see here, see this? Obviously, and the head appears only half. Head appears only half. Only this much is seen. The rest of the head, you are not able to see. It is behind the acetabulum. So, here is your acetabulum. So, this is a classical x-ray of posterior dislocation hip. Question 8. A male patient presented with the fracture of tibia following a road traffic accident. He was managed appropriately, but after two days he developed dyspnea, petechiae involving the whole body, and a fall in oxygen saturation. What is the likely diagnosis? Your options are. And the correct answer is fat embolism. Here's the explanation. 
So in, in, in clinical diagnosis of fat embolism, there is a criteria. This goes by a name SEVIT. This is called SEVIT's criteria. SEVIT's clinical criteria. Okay. SEVIT's clinical criteria. So, like that, no, many clinical, for rheumatic fever, it's called Duckett-Jones criteria. For bronchial asthma, it's called Sherwood-Jones criteria. Severity of bronchial asthma, Sherwood-Jones criteria. For pulmonary tuberculosis, it's called Kenneth-Jones criteria. So, many criteria are there. Duckett-Jones is for rheumatic fever. Okay, clinical criteria are there. Like, you know, rheumatic fever, the major, major, minor. Major it is. What is that? Polyarthralgia, polyarthritis, pancarditis, sidenham scoria, subcutaneous nodule, erythema marginatum, five major. In the minor, it's subdivided into clinical and lab. In clinical, it is fever, arthralgia, sore throat. In lab, it is, uh, uh, what is that? It is raised ESR, raised ASO title, prolongation of PR interval, positive throat swab. So, this is clinical. So, one major, two minor or two major diagnosis is rheumatic fever like that we are diagnosing no like that save its clinical criteria save its clinical criteria what is that usual onset i told you 24 to 48 hours maximum up to 72 hours tachycardia more than 140 per minute tachypnea patient should have cyanosis pyrexia and look at the last point Lower conjunctival petechiae. Clinically, this is the most important thing. Petechial hemorrhage can happen anywhere in the body. It can happen in the axilla, it can happen in the chest, over the back, face, anywhere. It can happen. But when it happens in the lower conjunctiva, it is pathognomonic of fat embolism. This is what they will give you a clinical picture in our neat entrance. They will frame a question like this. 20 year old Kalu met with a road traffic accident. 40 hours later, he developed severe dyspnea. On examination, the resident noted a petechial hemorrhage in the lower conjunctiva. Probable diagnosis, fat embolism. Okay, very simple. So, they say lower conjunctival hemorrhage is pathognomonic. Is pathognomonic. Yes. Now, you should know what is GERD's criteria. Two names you should remember. Sevit, GERD. Whenever these two names, either Sevit or GERD is coming, that question is about fat embolism. GERD's clinical criteria. Okay, what do you mean by GERD's clinical criteria? Okay, see, very simple. Right, major... minor under major triad of symptoms number one it is dyspnea okay dyspnea number two patient may be having cerebral symptoms okay symptoms what is that cerebral confusion disproportionate to saturation so, saturation, low, this cerebral confusion, cerebral confusion, confusion. Number three, rashes, especially lower conjunctiva, lower conjunctiva. Under minor comes your tachycardia, tachycardia. Right here, the cerebral confusion here. One more thing, saturation should be less than 60 percent. Saturation, PaO2, saturation. So tachycardia, cyanosis, fat globules in the urine. Urine. So these are major and minor. They are called GERD criteria. You know GERD criteria and same it almost the same. The thing you should not forget, patient will have basically the clinical feature is dyspnea, saturation less than 60, cerebral confusion, petechial rash, especially lower conjunctiva. Okay, when we remember, this is enough. So these are the clinical manifestations. Question 9. 
an intrauterine scan at the 13th week of pregnancy showed a fetus with multiple long bone fractures. What is commonly associated with this finding? Your options are. And the correct answer is osteogenesis imperfecta. Here's the explanation. Type 2, it happens in the fetal life or peri before perinatal period. So what happens? Hundreds of fractures happen in a newborn, they will die. You won't see cases. The cases that comes to an orthopedician's clinic is either type 1 or type 4. Only the dominant type I can see in my clinics. Type 2, type 3, most of them are dead very early. Many are still born. Osteogenesis imperfecta type 2, still born. This is the most severe type, worst type. Most of the time these babies are still born or they won't survive long after the birth. You see all the fractures, everything, all the bones gone. Okay, so type 2. Only pediatricians, okay, while during the delivery, an obesity or a pediatrician can see. So it's a worst to form. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you found the video interesting. See you in the next one.